One of the cancers that you both talk about in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide is transitional cell carcinoma. I want to first of all throw this to you, Dr. Dressler. If you're looking at transitional cell carcinoma, what likely are the signs and symptoms that a dog guardian is uh, facing? Well, this tumor is the most common cancer of the urinary tract, and you, you see it more in dogs uh, of certain breeds like Scotties and also dogs that are more overweight or obese. And the strange thing about transitional cell carcinoma is that it's a growth that's coming out from the inside of the bladder wall, uh, growing internally into the bladder. And it can really look like a urinary tract infection to a veterinarian because the signs are almost identical, at least first off. And those signs reflect inflammation of the bladder. What this means to the dog is they'll feel uncomfortable, and so many times they'll have blood in the urine, many times they'll be straining to urinate, many times licking at the genital and often urinating small amounts frequently. And one of the tricky things for the veterinarian, uh, and also an aspect that all guardians should be aware of, is that often a urinalysis will look just like a urinary infection, and so we always need to have this type of cancer in mind when we're dealing with an apparent diagnosis of uh, a urinary tract infection, especially if you have a Scotty or an obese dog or an elderly dog. Dr. Ettinger, what are your thoughts on transitional cell carcinoma? Yeah, it's, it's one of those that um, guardians look back and wonder if it should have been caught sooner because, and actually what's interesting is a lot of dogs with transitional cell carcinoma have a secondary bacterial infection, a secondary urinary tract infection, and that's why they temporarily respond to the antibiotics and then they complete the course of antibiotics and the symptoms recur. So it's a little bit frustrating and hindsight tends to be 20-20, but it's a cancer with a lot of treatable options. Um, some dogs, depending on the location in the bladder, will recommend surgery, um, but it is a can cancer that even if it's non-surgical, they can respond very well to chemotherapy. There's a lot of different options and some new chemotherapy options out there for transitional cell carcinoma. Um, and so it, it's definitely one that you want to find out if the cancer is spread, if it's surgical, and then, you know, just consider all the different options for it. Dr. Dressler, uh, what are your thoughts on treatment options for transitional cell carcinoma? Yeah, the surgical options there are usually or most commonly a palliative. That means that we're trying to improve life quality, not always necessarily life expectancy. As Dr. Ettinger pointed out, uh, chemotherapeutic options, uh, which do the same thing. We've also got to remember to make changes to the diet. We want to use a cancer-fighting diet. We want to use supplements, uh, including supplements that turn on cell suicide and cancer cells. Those are called apotogens. Uh, immune support, uh, very, very important uh, for these cancers. And of course, deliberate steps to do life quality enrichment so that we can make sure that we've deliberately taken the energy and the time to maximize our dog's enjoyment in life and uh, happiness in life. There is I, I, I do want to add one thing. There is some evidence that um, surgery, if it is in a resectable area, will allow chemotherapy to be a little bit more effective. So it can be considered palliative, but there's some recent evidence, which is still being looked at, that um, perhaps if you do surgery first and then add chemotherapy, it's better than just going straight to chemotherapy. So it really varies case by case. Very good. Thank you so much. There's a lot of information on transitional cell carcinoma in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. And I want to thank you both for joining us today. Dr. Ettinger in New York, Dr. Dressler in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.